Hello everyone, I am the Lore Explorer, and I have something I think is sorta of special for you in today's loop. As always, this video will contain full spoilers for Outer Wilds and Echoes of the Eye, but today I had my buddy Zen make something special for you all. Instead of taking the Harthian tour, we will be talking all about scale, but not really in a lore sense. That may be a video for another day. Today, I just want to showcase the size of everything we see in game. Since everything is relative, and in the game, we constantly have a moving frame of reference, it's hard to get a good sense of scale with everything, and the size of some of these planets or objects, so let's use Zen's mod to tackle that head on. Now, usually when you watch these scale videos, the narrator will always get a huge shock value at how much larger the sun is than anything else. In our solar system, which has a pretty small sun, the sun is still 99% of the mass in the entire system. That's just how things work out. Even with all of that stuff in mind, Giant's Deep is probably around half the size or bigger than the sun, which does not equate to mass, I know that, but still. And the same is probably true in the Outer Wild system, I'm not sure, but what is for sure is in comparison with the sun, we can easily see why the devs call Giant's Deep their take on a gas giant. And it does serve as a good demonstration as to why the sun is still king though. In the close-up view, looking at the sun, we can barely see anything but the sun. But turning around to look at Giant's Deep, it doesn't take up so much of our field of view. It is still huge, but we can still see stars around it. But truthfully, seeing the two next to each other, I was seriously surprised at how big Giant's Deep is. And the same thing can be said for Dark Bramble. While yes, I have measured all of these planets personally, I still get surprised by how long the branches of Dark Bramble are. This is essentially a bush gone crazy, so to see it measure up with a gas giant of the system, the largest planet around, that's just amazing. And the largest one of those vines growing out are probably around 0.7 to a kilometer or so long, alone. And as we know, inside Dark Bramble, those nodes and vines are even bigger. And now we get to the ring planet. But I think it's important that we take this with a grain of salt, keeping relativity and whatnot in mind, and the fact that we only see it from the simulation, it's hard to say exactly how big the ring planet is supposed to be in comparison to others in our system. But when designing the ring planet, this is the size the developers chose. I imagine the center bit is probably meant to be about as large as Giant's Deep or even bigger maybe. And the rings would obviously grow along with it being a lot larger than that. But that's just my guess. It's still nice to get such a relaxed view of it with no limits and just out in space on its own. And again, the same thing can be said for the stranger. It is so cool to be able to see it in such a relaxed view. And since Zen added a flashlight to the free cam mod, this is a pretty unprecedented look at the stranger's two faces here, all lit up and close up. And I've mentioned this before, but with this much light and a pulled back view, the stranger looks so much more like a machine or device. I can't help but notice a small resemblance to the artifacts here. And I wonder if that may be intentional or a hint or something like that. But since the scale of the ring planet is called into question, I figure it's best to compare the stranger to Brittle Hollow. And looking at it, the core of the stranger is a bit larger than Brittle Hollow is round. It's not quite as wide as Brittle Hollow is round, but the stranger still matches up pretty well with the second largest planet, ignoring plant wildlife, that we have in the system. And if you take into consideration the rings on the panels of the stranger, I'd say the stranger may be larger than Brittle Hollow, I'm not so sure. Which I always knew would be planet size, I just didn't think it'd be that planet size. I thought it'd be one of the smaller planets. But nope, it matches up with the one that has a freaking black hole as its core. Speaking of which, Brittle Hollow and Timber Hearth are a pretty good size comparison, but one thing I noticed is it almost looks like Timber Hearth could wear, you know, Brittle Hollow's crust as a jacket. Nice, snug, cozy fit. Now this is one of the things I wanted to see the most, the vessel in all of its glory, just floating out in the great vastness of space. But what I really wanted to see is how it's stacked up to everything. We only see it in what could be considered other dimensions from our own, in Dark Bramble and around the eye, so it's hard to get a good scale out there. But having it right here in our solar system, we can get a view of it right next to a planet and get a good size reading on it. 
and it turns out it's just about the same size as Ember Twin, which, as spaceships go, that is pretty big. But I don't know, I might just be going crazy. I did not expect to know my spacecraft to be that big. I knew hundreds of Gnome I lived on them, many hundreds, but the idea that it's planet size is just wild to me. Maybe it's because we don't get to see a lot of it, or because the inside are like smaller cramped tunnels when we visit it, but it just seems smaller. So to see it match up with one of the smaller planets in the solar system, even if it is one of the smaller ones, is just amazing to me. Since we always have its buddy right next to it for size comparisons, I think people get a pretty good grip on the size of Ember Twin and Ash Twin, so that may be what you'd expect here, but what may surprise people is the entirety of the Ash Twin projects lies within this small core of a planet. Even though it looks small, it can fit so much inside, and when we enter it, Maybe the Ash Twin Projects looks a little bigger than it is, but it still is pretty big, and it all fits within Ash Twin's core. But whoa, take a look at this everyone, the Orbital Probe Cannon in its full glory as well, not fragmented into tiny pieces only vaguely kept together through a shared orbit, and holy crap is it big. Again, I knew it was big, we are minuscule when we enter this thing, but with its usual companion, Giant's Deep, ever by its side to compare it to, it always looked pretty small to me. I had it on par with the gravity cannons in the solar system, just a bit bigger maybe, but no, this thing is massive in comparison. Just look down at the barrel of this thing. You can hardly even see the end with any detail because it's just so far away. You'd need a telescope to see it. To get a good sense of this, look at this picture of Ember Twin with the gravity cannon right next to the orbital probe cannon. It just uh, the orbital probe cannon is on size with the whole planet, while the gravity cannon barely sticks out of the surface of the planet. And you know what? I think the same thing happened with the sun station. With the huge, massive sun behind it, it almost looked like a toy to me as it orbited the sun. But we can see here, it's just about as big as Hollow's Lantern, and about the same size as the orbital probe cannon as well. This makes me think all of the spacecraft were likely built at the construction yard on Giant's Deep and flung to space in a tornado. Then, they probably flew to where they needed to be through gravity manipulation of sorts like the shuttles do. But that's neither here nor there for this video. Another body that's hard to get a sense of is the quantum moon. Since it's always changing reference points and we have very different things to compare it by, it always looks a different size. But we can see here, it's about the same size as Hollow's Lantern as well. But that gets us to what may be the biggest surprise and treat in the whole video, and maybe the scariest, an anglerfish flying through space, ready to pounce and attack you as you do a leisurely flight to Ash Twin. No, but seriously guys, everyone knew anglerfish were big, but quantum moon big, the atoll rock big, that's just amazing. And all I can picture now is a silly little anglerfish trying to hide behind the atoll rock to try to trick you as you try to fly away, but you can see its silly little dangly do hanging over the top. Oh, dumb little anglerfish, what are you doing hiding behind the atoll rock? But anyway, we have to keep in mind that, of course, we only see this inside Dark Bramble, which again is another dimension, so the scale may be a little off here, but somehow I think it's pretty spot on, just a little give or take there. And again, another major treat for the episode, and a little bit of a surprise to me, is how big the eye silencing probe is. Next to the Atoll Rock, this thing looks massive, but of course, when flying through space above the eye, it tends to look very small. But being able to see it like this, all lit up, is seriously a dream. I never noticed that the back of it even had antler designs thrown in there. I mean, it makes sense, but I would have never guessed that the eye silencing probe is about as large as the Atoll Rock. I mean, this thing could be a fully fledged artificial moon, nice green glow included. From here, things tend to get on the small side, and we have a good sense at the scale of everything there. And the real last interesting thing to see here, in my opinion at least, is the Nomai probe. Apparently, it's just about as big as the whole White Hole Station, and I know it's an advanced piece of technology, likely very sensitive, and we sort of do know it was huge prior to this due to the cannon's housing, but this still came as a small shock to me. Most of the things the Nomai built seem way larger than I ever noticed, which means I'm either very oblivious to things, or the relative scale of everything seriously threw me off. Either way, I am very glad I had this mod to help me get a sense of things. But 
I think that's just about all I have to showcase for everyone in this video. There's still a few objects left in the mod that I didn't highlight, but I think the scale-wise, this was just about the most interesting stuff I could highlight. And I just want to mention again, Zen is awesome. They remembered a few objects that I completely forgot, and if you remember, they also helped me with the Daydream mod. Plus, they made the Visible Stranger mod, which was very helpful. Zen has been a huge asset to the modding community and this channel directly, and it's neat because they actually show off the process of how they do all of this stuff on their own channel. They have an entire channel dedicated to covering their Outer Wilds modding escapades. So if seeing an anglerfish flying around Giant's Deep sounds fun to you, go check their channel out and show them some love. As usual, a special thank you to the members here on the channel. A big shout out to St. Maxi, who recently decided to kindly put a Milo in the jar. And as always, this is the Lore Explorer, exploring Outer Wilds in new ways. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.